on my way to get some breakfast before noon for once. Just dropped, just dropped it. I brought the real Go Plus with me today, but the focus of this segment of this video is not my breakfast. No, the focus today is hatching this egg. All right, that's it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. No, I'm just kidding. The real deal today is that Niantic just announced a rock type spawn event for Pokemon Go coming Thursday of this week. That's tomorrow. Now that you're watching this video, the rock type event starts in just over 24 hours from the time this video went live. And while it obviously hasn't started yet, it does look to be a little more promising than the recent grass type event. The event, officially called Adventure Week, runs from 1 o'clock p.m. Pacific time on Thursday, May 18th through 1 o'clock p.m. Pacific time on Thursday, May 25th. So one week. Now with a rock type event, it's pretty much exactly what you'd expect. Increased spawns for rock type Pokemon. They specifically mention Ammonite and Kabuto and their evolutions. And then say, keep an eye out, you might even find an Aerodactyl, which is something that a lot of people still need. It's a pretty rare Pokemon. Hopefully, uh, a lot of you will have some luck catching that during this event. Now beyond just rock types spawning at increased rates, there are a couple other bonuses that we'll be able to take advantage of during the event. For one thing, Pokestops are going to drop extra items, so I'm expecting probably double. Uh, six will be the new minimum items that you get from a Pokestop spin. So definitely good news for rural players, people who don't often have chances to stock up on items. And on top of that, Pokeballs are going to be 50% off in the shop, although with increased items dropping, hopefully you won't need to buy Pokeballs as often. And the final bonus, and probably the most exciting for me, is that buddy Pokemon are going to find candies four times faster. That means four times as many candies for walking with your buddy Pokemon. Which means instead of having to walk 120 more kilometers with my Mareep, I now only have to walk 30 kilometers to have enough candies to finally get my Ampharos. So I'm going to be doing a lot of walking during this event. I'm on my way down to the pike now, but here's an Electabuzz, and that's honestly something I haven't seen in a while. So, kind of exciting. Of course, there was a time when the pike itself was an Electabuzz nest and I just went crazy and caught a ton, but this is cool. It's been a while. Nice. Ooh, there's Team Instinct gyms down here. So with this rock event coming, obviously, you know my buddy strategy. It's to finally, it's to finally get enough candies to finish this evolution because it's one of the few big evolutions that I have left for Gen 2. And of course, with events like this, with increased buddy candies, there are always two different routes you can go. One, if you want to finish your Pokedex, you can walk with the Pokemon that you need candies to evolve. And two, if you want to be stronger in gyms, you can walk with the Pokemon that you need candies to power up. And a Seedra? What is going on today? These aren't like great Pokemon by any means, but they're definitely Pokemon I haven't seen in the wild in a while. So again, if you're like me, trying to complete the Pokedex, Walk with the Pokemon that you need candies for. You know, we did the math last time, there was an increased buddy candy event, and in the end you're gonna have to walk the same distance to get all the candies you need with all the different Pokemon you need. So during the event I would suggest Pokemon with the highest buddy candy distance just because it will feel like you're getting more out of it. Of course if you don't care about either gyms or completing your Pokedex, you could always walk with Pidgey and just stock up on candies to do evolutions for XP. That's an option too. Let's see if I can get close to this gym. The Clefable at the top? Clefable? Charizard. I love Team Instinct. I don't ever see fun stuff like this in gyms from anyone other than Team Instinct. So let's keep it going. My best Kangaskhan. Probably fainted. Yep, there it is. 1816, I'm gonna power it up a little. By the way, check this out. I do still have one Pokemon in a gym. That's a win for me. And my main goal with powering this up, the reason I'm not choosing to power one up with good IVs, is because my only one with good IVs is right now 400 something CP, and I'll just be able to get this one a lot stronger, because all I really care about with it is gym placement. I want to put it in gyms so people can see it. The higher its CP, the longer, theoretically, it's going to last, even if only by 30 seconds or so. Oh, never mind. I gotta keep going and I have to train it up. 
While I'm doing that though, we can talk about rock types. There are obviously quite a few rock types that are uh, relevant in the current metagame. The thing is, with the gym rework coming soon, I'm hesitant to say that these Pokemon are going to remain relevant. They'll probably still be very strong, although they might not be the absolute top tier that they are now. But obviously you have Rhydon. It's the third highest total CP out of any available Pokemon right now. And if the gym rework doesn't address the CP issue, and Pokemon are still ranked by CP after the gym rework. Oh, that's maxed out? I guess I need to level up. Well, anyway, uh, if CP remains untouched after the gym rework, then you're definitely going to want Rhydon. And from that bit of code that we found in the latest APK mine, we know that there are limits coming soon to the number of the same species of Pokemon you can put in a gym, in which case Golem will probably end up being a very common Pokemon. So you're definitely going to want to catch Geodude, Graveler, and Golem during the event. And of course, there is a rock type at the very top of the CP charts right now, and that's Tyranitar. Larvitar is pretty, uh, pretty rare, Pupitar obviously even more rare, and Tyranitar itself incredibly rare. And I... Did I miss that, really? I guess I did. By the way, did you see that Bullet Punch's animation changed? probably because the Pokemon company decided that bullet holes are not very family friendly. Oh man, it's going down. It took too long setting my lineup. This is, it's not too far away. You know what I want out of the gym rework, honestly? A faster way to choose my Pokemon. This is ridiculous how long it takes to set up a team. But anyway, those are definitely the three top rock types that you're going to be looking for. Obviously, if you need Pokedex completion, uh, some of the fossils, Ammonite, Kabuto, and Aerodactyl are rare for a lot of people, Aerodactyl especially. I'm going to keep trying, even though it's going down already. Jeez. I guess because I drifted away, I'm just going to get that error over and over again. Can I go in like this? Can we fix that with the gym rework too? I can't do anything now. I can't defend my team's gym. But I guess that's okay anyway because I have to head back to the apartment. My friend Blake is coming by to pick something up that he left here the other day. We'll talk about rock types when I get there. Let's see if I can name them all off the top of my head. From Gen 1, we've mentioned everything but Onyx, and then from Gen 2 you also have Sudowoodo, Shuckle, Mag Cargo. Is there anything else? Honestly, the most exciting are definitely the top tier rock types and the rare ones. Hopefully, we'll see increased rock type spawns outside of just rock biomes, unlike the grass type event, which really didn't have a huge effect outside of areas where grass type Pokemon normally spawn. Well, I managed to find another Team Instinct gym in Long Beach today. Level 7, and let's see if I can get through this before my phone battery dies. So, I think we've pretty much covered the rock type event, what you should do with your buddy, uh, what Pokemon you should be looking out for. Now, there is one other thing that, uh, that I want to talk about. While I'm battling this gym, I have a feeling that the gym rework is coming very soon. It's always sort of been my guess that it was going to come sometime during May, because earlier this year, Niantic announced that they're switching to a quarterly update schedule, with major updates coming every quarter of the year. The first one was Gen 2, and that came in February. The next one we know is the gym rework, and it's now May. Wow, that really hurt. Um, May is exactly three months from February. May 16th, today, is actually three months from the launch of Gen 2, and obviously we didn't get it today. but. This event, the rock type event, lasts until Thursday, May 25th. Now, that's interesting for two reasons. One, uh, Thursday is the day that app updates appear in the iOS app store. If you're playing on an iPhone, you've probably noticed that your updates typically come in on Thursday. So if Niantic wanted to drop a big update at the end of the event, it's timed perfectly to do that. Otherwise, why start the event on Thursday? It's such a random, random day for them to choose rather than starting it on a Friday like they have in the past or 
you know, Sunday through Sunday. Thursday through Thursday is a little interesting to me. Now, obviously, uh, right after an event is a perfect time to drop an update because events typically get people interested in the game. It brings a lot of people back who haven't been playing, and with an update dropping immediately afterwards, of course that's going to keep people playing well after the event ends. Now on top of that, uh, Gen 2 launched right after the Valentine's Day event ended, and Niantic actually sent out a press kit. There was an article on Polygon about the Rock-type event, and in my opinion, the Rock-type event isn't something spectacular. It's not like a huge deal. Um, it's gonna be a good event, definitely, but it's not like a special holiday event. It's not like any of the other events that have really been announced by major publications. So, with that said, I don't want to go too much into my expectations because that's a topic I'm gonna cover in a couple days in a very special way. It's not gonna be a normal video, so hopefully you're excited for that. But, there is uh, one other thing that I wanna go over as soon as I finish battling this gym and training it up. Well, so much for that. I didn't bring the charger out. I didn't think I was gonna be out here that long. And obviously my phone wasn't charged, so. The last thing I wanna talk about for today is this again. Uh, I got a lot of questions about it that I just want to answer real quickly. So one of the main questions was, does it track distance like a Go Plus? Yes. It does absolutely everything that a Go Plus does. In fact, the game can't tell the difference between this and this. It thinks they're exactly the same thing. So anything that this does, this is also going to do. It'll track distance, it'll let you run the app in the background, it'll let you uh, lock your phone, and it'll still work. So all that is good. And then the other main thing was a lot of people wanted to know if it works while it's charging. And that's something I actually didn't test, but I'm going to do right now. So it's charging. I'm just gonna put an incense on because I may or may not drift in range of the Pokestops. Mm. There we go. Okay, so Centric just spawned. And while it's charging, there we go. Yeah, see, it's giving me that error. So, this is a, uh, I think it just means my Pokemon box is full. But it definitely works while charging. Again, you saw it, it shows the icon or the image for uh, more than five items received from a Pokestop every time there's an error. So if your box is full, but I mean that, that already answers the question. It does work while it's charging. So that effectively eliminates the issue with an eight hour battery life because you can always just plug it into your portable charger which you're going to be carrying with you anyway if you're bringing your phone out to play Pokemon Go. So yeah, in that way it's definitely much better than this. And someone brought up a good point, is that you don't have to throw away batteries. Since it's rechargeable, it's going to make a lot less waste. So Nintendo, Niantic, Go Plus Gen 2, rechargeable battery. The other thing a lot of people mentioned is that you can mod your Go Plus. You can definitely mod it by opening it up and soldering some wires and moving it around. And I'll put a tutorial, a link to a tutorial on Reddit that explains how you can do that if that's something that you're interested in doing. Um, and then there's the other thing where you can just sort of like rubber band a coin to the front of it and just hold the button down and it'll auto catch and auto spin Pokestops. But that only works on iOS. When you're on Android, that doesn't work. I've tried it many times and a lot of people have confirmed that that, uh, that function, just holding the button down, won't work on Android. At the end of the day, um, you know, I haven't been banned. I honestly don't feel like it's that big of a deal to be using this thing on auto catch. It, for me, it takes a little bit away from the game in that you're not interacting with it, that you're not really actively participating in what you're doing. Sorry, I'm, I'm uh, watching the NBA playoffs here. Yeah, anyway, at the end of the day, um, I would probably recommend this, and a lot of people pointed it out that it is actually cheaper if you live in the UK. It's $29.99 versus $34.99 for a Go Plus. So if you're in the UK, it's cheaper. If you're in the US, it's more expensive. Another good point is that someone brought up that they have uh, mobility issues and that it's difficult for them to uh, control their chair and play the game and press the button on the Go Plus at the same time. So. The auto catch mode is actually kind of a good thing for accessibility for people who maybe don't have a lot of motor function in their hands or who have a hard time getting around and need some sort of uh, assistance like a walker or something. 
it could be great for those types of situations. So anyway, I'm gonna eat my dinner now. I'm gonna watch this game. Uh, rock event starts tomorrow. Starts 24 hours from, no. There it goes, it's auto catching. Rock event starts 26 hours from the time this video goes live. So start prepping however you would do that. I guess you don't really need to do much other than get ready to walk. Oh my god, I forgot the most important thing. The most important thing about this event is the new hat. That's right, Niantic announced that there will be a new adventurer hat available in the shop when the rock event starts. I'm assuming it's going to be free like the Magikarp hat was. And uh, if it looks anything like this, I'm hoping for like an Indiana Jones type of hat, I'll definitely be rocking it in game. So anyway, uh, I hope you guys enjoy this one. I hope you're excited for the event. I know I am, and very excited to see what comes soon after. See you guys tomorrow.